Welcome to the Tyler W. IQ software series. In this session, we'll take a look at importing Windows 7 into VirtualBox. We'll see how it fits in with our router, PFSense, and our lab infrastructure. And we'll check to make sure we don't have any warnings that need to be taken care of before we fire it up. Here we go. We have previously set up VirtualBox as a Type 2 or hosted hypervisor, meaning in our case, VirtualBox is running as a program in Windows. We also downloaded a 7-zip archive of a Windows 7 machine. Using 7-zip, we decompressed the archive to our desktop and is now an OVA file, which we want to import into VirtualBox to allow us to have the Windows 7 virtual machine running in conjunction with PFSense, which we previously installed. PFSense is our router. How the whole thing works is that Windows 7, when it gets imported, will be connected directly into the PFSense machine into our virtual infrastructure. The PFSense router is set up to be connected to two virtual switches by creating two NICs within the PFSense application. There's a third adapter, which is bridged to the internet so that any devices internally, if we let them, can have access to the internet. Once we import the Windows 7 machine, we'll connect it to virtual switch one and Windows 7 machine will have access to the internet and any other devices that we have connected to Virtual Switch 1 or Virtual Switch 2, depending on how we set up the router. That would make Windows 7 one of our lab machines. So how do we go about importing it into VirtualBox? It's as simple as double-clicking on the OVA file that we have on our desktop. Double-clicking the OVA file will launch an instance of VirtualBox. We'll actually have two running when this happens. And the import process will occur, allowing us to have the virtual machine available to us. The first screen in the import process allows us to look at the appliance or virtual machine settings and make some basic configuration setups like where we want the virtual machine to be installed. Once we're happy, we can click on the import button and the import process starts. This can be a fairly lengthy process, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we are going to accelerate that process here so that we don't have to wait the entire time. The import process sets up all the files that's required for the virtual machine inside VirtualBox. Once the import process is complete, we'll find that Windows 7 will be available to us in the VirtualBox infrastructure. And now we just have to go through some preliminary setups to make sure that it's configured accurately for us. We don't need two instances of VirtualBox, so I'll close one of these. We'll see that they're identical here. They both have Windows 7 in them. There's no difference. We want to take a look at the Windows 7 configuration settings. So with Windows 7 highlighted, we'll click on the settings button, and that will show us the settings of the virtual machine. Of interest to us right off the bat are these two warnings at the bottom. One says the display screen is wrong. We need to be the VBOX SVGA adapter as opposed to the default that was pulled in. On the left-hand side, we can pick, pick display and pick the VBOX SVGA adapter. Hmm. If we don't pick the right one, the box won't clear. If we do pick the right one, the box will clear. Ah, we don't have the error anymore. And the other one says that we have more than 50% allocated memory to the machine and they're recommending against that. So we can go up to the system here, use the slider bar and bring back the memory to the green zone. I'm gonna bring it back to 1024 here. Notice my error is gonna be cleared and we are good to go. We may wanna check on the network settings just to make sure that we're connected to the, the host adapter, the VirtualBox host only adapter here for Ethernet. Uh, from our diagram, this is the one that we wanted. So Windows 7 is now connected to the virtual switch number one. And that's all there was to it. We can click on the start button above, or we can double click on the virtual machine and Windows 7 will come up and boot for us. It's now going to be running inside VirtualBox. Again, we've accelerated the process a little bit here. The Windows boot process takes a little bit longer than what we're showing. But Windows 7 will be ready to run for us momentarily, and here it is. We do have a couple little virtual box notes at the top, about auto-capturing the keyboard and auto-capturing the mouse. Uh, just some functions that it's letting us know that VirtualBox does for us, that it's going to be able to use the mouse and the keyboard inside the virtual machine. So we can click on the little X and dismiss those. They're just no information for us. And now we can press Control, Alt, Delete to log in. No wait, we can't press Control, Alt, Delete to log in because that's for our host machine. We need to, we need to send those commands to the machine. 
so we can go up to Input, Keyboard, and actually insert Control-Alt-Delete. That sends the Control-Alt-Delete signal to the Windows 7 virtual machine, and we can put in our password. Once we enter the appropriate password here, we hit Enter. Windows 7 will launch for us, and once again, we are ready to run the Windows machine. Clear the few little error messages that come up to start with. This is just a lab environment, and we're good to go. We won't restart it now either. When we're done, we can close it down by going to machine and doing an ACPI shutdown, which is my power shutdown. Or I can even go to the start button, click shutdown, and my Windows machine will log off and shut down for me. It is just that easy. Anytime you want to restart it, you can simply double click it again. Recommendation for you here is to start the PFSense machine first. It is the router, it's part of the infrastructure. So we'll always want to start the PFSense machine first and then launch any other machines that we have. In our case, we only have Windows 7 now, so we will launch that one second. And by launching, I mean clicking that green start button up in the bar there or by double clicking on the machine itself. Well, that wraps up this session where we imported Windows 7 into VirtualBox. We did a little troubleshooting, we did a little configuration, we got Windows 7 up and running. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to see all the videos that we have. And again, thanks for watching.